wouldn't you like to be in charge of when and how you die? Well, with physician-assisted death, that can be the case for some people. Physician-assisted suicide or death can help the passing of a terminally ill person become easy and peaceful for both them and their family. I've had many family members pass, um, and we've actually considered physician-assisted suicide for my great aunt. Um, unfortunately, she didn't pass before we could actually take the steps to kind of get her there. But today I'm going to talk about what physician-assisted suicide is, why people are against it, and how it can help someone in their everyday life. So there are two types of physician-assisted suicide. Um, the first type is euthanasia, which is if you know, like, putting a dog down, that's what they inject the dog with, but it's like a little different for humans. Um, it's illegal everywhere in the U.S., but it is legal in the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Colombia, and Canada. Um, which is the doctor gives the patient a lethal drug through an IV in a hospital setting. Um, in this type of physician assisted suicide, um, there's less room for error, and it typically occurs when like the patients cannot talk, they cannot speak, they cannot move, they're almost bedridden. Um, and there's many types. Voluntary is when the patient is aware of what they're doing, they're fully competent, conscious, and they can make their own decisions and they do it themselves, and like they kind of make the decisions themselves. Non-voluntary is when the patient is not able to make the, the, the decision themselves based on their condition. So it's made by someone who represents the patient, typically a spouse or a family member, and they make the decision based on the patient's condition. Involuntary, which is where the patient is fully competent and conscious, but they don't give consent, which is just murder. Um, there's passive, which is where the doctor stops giving the patient the life forces they need. So they, a lot of patients have like feeding tubes, they stop giving them the feedings, they stop giving them their meds, and then the patient just slowly starts to die because they're not getting those things that they need. And then there's active, which is administering the drug that does kill them. And then there's assisted suicide, which is legal in Washington, D.C., Oregon, California, Colorado, Vermont, and Maine. Um, Medical News Today defines it as intentionally helping a person commit suicide by providing drugs for self-administration at that person's voluntary and competent request. So basically, the doctor gives the patient pills, tells them what a lethal dose is, and they essentially take it themselves whenever, wherever they want. And they both give the patient to change my mind until the very last minute. So I mean, those are the different types. And the reasons why people are against it are a lot of it's ethical issues because people see doctors and they say, oh, doctors need to help heal a person. They should always, they use the phrase, always care, never kill. And while, yes, it is true, a doctor's job is to follow, is to like help heal a patient and make their life as long as possible, but it's also, their job is to also like kind of meet the needs of the patient and meet the patient's wishes within their scope of practice. <laughs> a lot of people also say it's dangerous, that there's too many risks, and that it can endanger someone who is simply in like a fragile state of mind. And in the states where it is legal, there are very, very many requirements and regulations, which we will get into, and there's lots of paperwork to ensure that it's as safe as possible. And a lot of people also say there are other options. They say we should meet suffering with compassion and care and not killing. And I cannot stress enough that it is completely voluntary. No one's like, the doctors don't suggest it typically. Like I think there's actually, in Oregon where it's legal, there's a thing that say, if somebody's terminally ill, you cannot suggest it. The patient must request it on their own. Um, sometimes it's the best option when somebody has lost almost all quality of life. So like when they can't walk, can't talk, can't eat. Um, Brian Anderson, who is an author, he used a quote that says, instead of embracing physician-assisted suicide, we should respond to suffering with true compassion and solidarity. People seeking physician-assisted suicide typically suffer from depression or other mental illnesses as well as simply from loneliness. This is not true at all. Um, everywhere where it is legal, it is a law saying that the person must be terminally ill with less than six months to live. So it's it's used for people who have an illness and who are going to die. It's not for someone who is depressed. You can't walk into a hospital and request it. You have to have 
something saying that you are going to die within the next six months. And now I'm going to talk about why people think that it could be helpful. Um, there are a lot of regulations. In Oregon, they passed it in 1997. And their regulations are, you must be 18 years or older, you have to have six months to live in order for it to be administered. You can request it, so if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, you only have a year, you can request it saying, I would like, when my six months come, I would like the medicine. Um, the patient has to be well informed of what's gonna happen, what they have to do, along with other options, for instance, hospice or end of life care. And the patient has to be fully mentally competent in making their own decisions. They can't, I know in euthanasia, like sometimes another person, like a family member will do it, but this, it has to be the patient themselves. And the family has to be informed of their choice. And in some cases, the family actually has to approve. Um, there has to be three different requests. You have to do an oral request twice, and those requests have to be at least 15 years apart, and then you have to do a written request. And they only do the physician suicide, so pills, euthanasia is illegal everywhere in the US, like I said. Um, it also gives the patients personal freedom. Um, somebody with a terminal, like a terminal illness had lost a lot of their life because of it. They have to constantly go to the doctor and they can't do the things that they used to be able to. Like a lot of times if someone is going through chemo, can't really go in public without wearing gloves or masks because they're so susceptible to illness. So it kind of gives someone the right to die on their own terms, which is why a lot of people like it. Because um, with the pills, you can do it at home. You don't have to be in the hospital with the doctor present. You can do it at home with your family, however you choose. And another thing is, not everyone's going to use it. Um, a few professors at the University of North Carolina did calculated that since it was passed in Oregon, 1,967 total physician-assisted suicide prescriptions have been written. However, only 1,275 deaths have occurred because of it. So a lot of people do change their minds before they actually go through with it. And the average age of someone who does do it is 72 years old, so it's not like young adults who are going through with it, it's always elderly people. And the main reason, like most, like the vast majority was because of terminal cancer. So as you can see, physician-assisted suicide can be helpful to someone with a terminal illness. And the connotation that it's for everyone and anyone who wants it is not true. It's for someone who is suffering and doesn't have a lot of life left. And like I said, my aunt, we considered it, um, we were going to move, she lived in Western Kansas, so we were going to move to Colorado so that she could go through with it, but unfortunately she did pass before we could actually like, fully consider it. And I really hope that this kind of opened your mind up to this. And so if it ever is like a debate in politics right now, it's not really a huge debate, but if it ever is, I really hope you do consider it. Thank you for listening. Great, thank you.